Welcome to the Hermit Poetry Series. I'm Neil Aiken, and on this channel, I normally read a lot of contemporary poetry, um, sometimes some of my own work, and then occasionally I read uh, poems from the past. Uh, today is one of those days. Uh, we're going to break with uh, what has been the pattern, really, for the last few weeks, where I usually read something relatively contemporary, um, and instead go back to, well, the 8th century. Um, I'm going back to a poem by Li Bai, sometimes known as Li Bo, Li Bo. Um, Li Bai um, is one of the most famous poets in, in uh, the Chinese literature um, and possibly you know, worldwide, internationally, people know his work. Um, it's come to us uh, through many different translations. And that's, that's kind of my interest is uh, the many different ways in which uh, one single poem of his gets rendered uh, into English. Um, this particular poem uh, is number 102 in the, the the Tang Dynasty, so 300 Tang Bombs is the, the name of the, the classic um, book of literature in which it's found. Um, and it's commonly known as, uh, the, the poem's title is uh, Song Yo Run, which means um, send, seeing a friend off or sending a friend off. Um, this is, um, so what I'm going to do for this particular episode is I'm going to, um, I'm going to provide first, uh, you'll see here, uh, the uh, the poem visually as it as it looks in Chinese, and then also I want to provide you with uh, you know sort of a, a romanization, um, which is sort of the using sort of the uh, the English Latin language uh, alphabet will will represent sort of phonetically how it sounds, and this is using pinyin, which is the one of the most common um, romanizations out there, and then following that also look at the uh, the literal. Uh, break it down in terms of the um, character by character, what is being um, represented or, or evoked. Um, sometimes it's uh, directly uh, denoted and other times it's connoted. But um, so this is, uh, this, this will provide you sort of the grid, I guess you could say, of what's happening in the poem. Um, and from there, we'll, we'll jump into a number of different translations. I've collected together 12 different translations plus a 13th one, which is my own, as sort of a, a way of kind of looking at the, the challenges presented by the poem and by the language and by the, the limitations of English, the um, limitations of grammar, um, and sort of just the fundamental differences in how um, poetry and how language works um, across these different centuries and across the language uh, differences and across cultural differences. Uh, this is Song Yo Run by Li Bai. Um, okay. Qing Shan Heng Bei Guo, Bai Shui Rao Dong Cheng, Zi Di Yi Wei Bie, Gu Peng Wan Li Zheng, Hu Yun Yu Zi Yi, Luo Ri Gu Ren Qing, Hui Xiu Zi Zi Qiu, Xiao Xiao Ban Ma Ming. Now, you can tell my Chinese is really rough and really out of practice, um, but hopefully it gives you a, a gist of it. Um, you can probably find out there other recordings, much better recordings. Um, and uh, I know on LibreVox you can track down uh, an audio uh, file of someone reading this, but they're reading it in Cantonese, which again is a completely different, um, uh, you know, the accent and the intonations will be different. Um, Interestingly, um, Cantonese in some respects is actually closer to how it probably would have sounded. And so in that respect, perhaps that's a more, more, I guess, if you want a sense of how the poem would have sounded, that would have, that would help. Um, but uh, I don't speak Cantonese, so we're out of luck there. Um, what uh, I can offer you, though, is, uh, is this, um, this breakdown. Um, and you'll, you'll see here, um, sort of in the literal, in the grid, that you, you get, uh, it's really a poem that breaks into couplets. Um, so the first two couplets, um, Qing Shang Heng Bei Guo, um, Bai Shui Rao Dong Cheng. The, uh, the first character kind of emphasizes a sense of color, of greenness, of, you know, it's, it's, pinpoint, here's already a problem, right? Um, the character represents a sense of lushness, of, of, uh, of verdant color, 
um, of young, something young as well, often green, but sometimes it could be more like a bluish green. Um, as has been talked about in other places, even the, the colors, blue and green, are separations or the Western European um, eye and how we separate blue and green is not the same as it operates in Japan and in China. Um, there, the sense of where the, where the line is between blue and green is much more hazy. Um, and there are other distinguishing features. So yeah, already, is it blue? Is it green? We don't know, but it's probably pushing more like the green. Um, Shan is, uh, is a mountain or a hill, but in Chinese, you don't know whether you're talking about one or you're talking about many, it's both. Um, so <laughs> plurality and singleness, hard to tell. Um, context is usually the clue. Hung, hung, hung is uh, to lie across to be horizontal. Um, that's more straightforward. North, um, obviously the directional north. Um, outer wall of the city is, is guo. Guo and guo cheng, um, th there's a, uh, like, yeah, so there's there's a sense of like they're paired together as well. And you'll see this in a second that really the the lines themselves also pair up, um, you know, and as we see them here, they're actually we have it represented horizontally, but actually the poem would have been read from right to left in vertical lines, uh, which is a whole different <laughs> challenge. Um, but what you will see is sort of that sense of these these concepts that were actually paired up um, side by side in parallel as well as running down. So um, here we have north and outer wall. Um, the next line, Bai Shui Rao Dong Cheng. The white water, uh, Bai is white, and that's pretty common. White um, water, uh, Rao is, is to wind around, to encircle, to, to circle. Um, there's a sense of like a bends around something um, or wraps around something. Uh, Dong is, is very clearly east. Uh, Cheng can be uh, like a city. It could be a township. It just seems to emphasize that there is a settlement there, usually pushing the size of a city. Um, okay, so that's the first couplet, right? And it, you notice already you've got this particular challenge. Um, Qing and Bai are, are going to be green and white. So the colors pair up there. You have mountain and water paired up. You have what is flat and linear horizontal being matched with something that bends in a circular pattern. Um, you have north and east and you have like uh, conceptually Guo, which is the outer wall of the city. Cheng is more of the city itself. So there's a, those pairings all the way throughout challenge, right? Okay. Uh, next couplet. Si di yi wei bie, gu pang, gu pang wan li zheng. So here we have, um, si is, is usually just this, so that one's easy. Uh, di, place, location. Um, it's like when you say si di, it's like, it's right here, right here. Um, yi is the number one but it also could be used um, as a way of saying like once or as soon as, as uh, it's hard to translate and that's another problem, but it's just sort of grammatically, you can use it as sort of the beginning of something. Um, uh, way be is like, um, way is to, to make happen, to use as be is a, is a separation, is a, is a divide, is, is things parting. So basically you have um, this location here is where we're going to make our party. Um, let's see, Gu Peng Wan Li Zheng. So uh, Gu here is just, uh, is to be lone or to be lonely or to be cut off, like that sense of like isolated. Um, Peng is, and this another complicated one, here, um, it's very specifically a uh, type of plant or family plant, artesmia, um, and most of the people translate this as tumbleweed. Uh, it could be thistle down. It's it's not actually a it's not a tumbleweed. It's um it's actually closer to being um like a flower. I mean, the plant pollinates or not pollinates, but, um, uh, but separates propagates by spreading 
with flowers in the wind. And so it's a sense of like a very light flower that is carried off into the wind. Um, in our Western American sort of tradition, that's the sense of the tumbleweed blowing across the prairie. Um, so that is sort of one that you'll see a lot of translators gravitate towards. And here comes the challenge. It's like, do you translate with an eye towards cultural similarity? So you can say like, here's something that that our, our reader in English is most likely going to identify with, or do we translate um, for a sense of like cultural accuracy that we're going to be as literal as possible. Um, and maybe that particular simile or that comparison is not going to hit home or resonate with the reader who encounters in English who may not be familiar with that particular plant. Um, uh, one, 10,000. But it's not always 10,000. Sometimes uh, the, the number 10,000 is simply used to represent like a vastness, a, 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 a countless number. But there is just sort of a, a huge number, innumerable. So it's 10,000 or it's innumerable. Um, it's countless. Li, li is, a, is a measurement of distance, uh, means roughly 0.5 kilometers or 0.3 miles. Um, Zung is usually translated or rendered as something like travel or march or journey. Um, and that's kind of the implication. Um, and then second line, we have Fu. Fu is to float or to be floating. Uh, and here again, a challenge. Um, Fu is a lot, of, a lot of characters in Chinese. I mean, Chinese in general, the verbs have no conjugation. Um, it is simply an action. And then the action could be ongoing. The action could have already passed. The action, uh, you will have to pick up the clues elsewhere. There are helper characters that will render something as past tense as the, the action is already completed. Um, but if they're not there, then you're basically left to guess whether you're talking about this as a verb action or as this, or as an action that's actually serving as an adjective. Um, yun is a cloud or clouds, plural. So you, if you have fu yun, then it's it's probably going to mean floating clouds or clouds adrift or clouds floating something the idea of floating with clouds. There we go. Um, you zi yi, uh, you you uh, you zi. In this case here, we just talked about helping characters. The zi here transforms yo, which means travel or wander, um, into a proper noun into the sense that it's a wanderer. Um, but zi on its own means son or child. So um, in this case, you're, we're pretty clear that we're going to be talking about a wanderer. Um, but buried in that is also this other sense of you know, child or son. Um, e is um, its thoughts. It's the things that we think, right? So here are thoughts. They're up in the head. Um, lo, lo er gu ran qing. Uh, lo, er, lo means to fall or to descend. Um, so we would talk about that in terms of like the, the fall of a, um, you know, the, the falling sun, the setting sun. But it can also mean like the fall of a, uh, of a, a great tyrant can also have a fall. Um, the, the end, the demise of things could also be a lo. Um, is, is clearly, I mean, this is one of the oldest characters in the sense that it's very petrographic. You have a representation of the sun. Um, gu is, is old, um, can be ancient as well. Um, Zhan is uh, another ancient character, which simply means person or human or man. Um, when you talk about, when you pair these up, gu run, uh, gu run is, is to serve uh, old people, uh, old folks you know, um, or ancient person, you know, so it's, it's a lot of things in there. It can be a little bit colloquial and at, at the same time, it can also be a sense of like, these are old people. So, um, Qing is feeling or sentiment. It's, it's, a, an emotional response. So when you look at them together again, look at them top and bottom, what we're going to see then is that once again, you have the pairing across the two. Um, so they parallel. So you have one has the verb begins with float or floating. The other one, so one's rising, floating. The other one is sinking, falling. Clouds are high in the sky and they're wandering. Um, well, clouds are high in the sky. 
Sun is also up in the sky. Wanderer versus old person. So wanderer and zi, again, interesting thing, right? So it's, uh, you know, zi and run are, are two different ways of identifying people. Um, and so that's in there. Thoughts being opposed to feelings. And then you get that type of parallel opposition. Um, so, but, so basically you have a very similar grammatical pattern across the whole thing, um, which moves us to the final couplet here. Um, um, this, I personally, I find these characters, um, particularly hard to, cha particularly challenging to pronounce. Um, partly because Chinese has a lot of similar sounds that are uh, separated or distinguished by tone. Um, and some particular tonal combinations um, are challenging if you are not a native speaker or if you're a very rusty native speaker. Um, and so uh, and so that's what you run into. Uh, in this case, you know, we have uh, hui shou. Hui shou, the first two characters kind of literally mean wave hands, right? Hui is to wave, hand or hands, plural. Um, Zi means uh, from the start. You could use this as a starting of, uh, of like, you can say from this point onwards, since this point. Um, but it also implies myself, self. Um, the second zi actually is, um, instead of being fourth tone, is actually first tone. And this one represents this or now. But historically, it also is a representation of silk or thread. Um, and then you have uh, chu. Chu is is um, it's just very simply to leave, to depart, um, and there's really no ambiguity about that one. Um, xiao xiao is uh, onomatopoeia. It, it's uh, it literally, well, it phonetically, acoustically is supposed to sound like a sigh, um, uh, a sound that that. Um, that like trees might make in a windstorm and a rainstorm or like um, something like that. It feels like, a, yeah, so wind and rain, there's like a sense of gloominess to it, a sadness to it. Um, and so xiao xiao is, is that sort of sense. Um, so if we have xiao xiao, xiao um, then it's followed by ban, ban, ma ming, ban, means it can mean a group it can mean to divide visually what's interesting about the character is that it that it is representative of a split jade a jade split in two um and it locates itself in the center of the last line so something precious is now broken in half and i think that's that's you know it is both like we are a pair and it's also we are separated um ma is a horse uh, which is interestingly, you know, it is a pictographic horse there. Um, and Ming, Ming is another, it borders on onomatopoeia. It's, it's representative of a, it means to sing, to call, to cry. It's usually used to describe the sound that birds might make. And again, if we look at the two together, then we get um, this sense of, uh, we have the waving of hands. Um, and then we have like this, this is part of our departure. Um, you know, as you know, we're right from this point, we're, we're, we're leaving, we're departing. What's interesting, the final line is really that xiao xiao, um, that, that sense of sigh, it's both this, the echo of a sigh, and it's also that sense of gloom. Um, and then it's on one half of the line, the other half of the line is the horse calling or the horses, plural, calling or crying, um, often to each other. And so, um, and then in between is that split. So you get a sense now that there's a fair bit of complexity now within the poem. So I think that's about it for today. We're going to wrap up at this point. Uh, next time we'll look at 13 different translations of Li Bai's Song Yo Run into English. And they begin with, from 1915, Ezra Pound, all the way through to last week um, in sort of a stab at translation I made. Um, and uh, I think what we'll do with the next episode is really just listen to each of the, the translations. And I'll provide sort of the text on the side so you can see what's happening on the page. 
and I think the goal really is to to walk away with with um, a better appreciation of sort of the cross section of translation attempts and how people struggle with different lines and come up with different solutions. And you'll see overlap, definitely, but you'll also see places where people veer off in their own directions um, and sort of tactical choices as to what to preserve and what to lose. Um, we'll go into more detail uh, about sort of those type of choices, the strategy of translation, the the quandaries and, and the dilemmas that you run into, as well as the um, opportunities for doing something that's radically different. Um, and, uh, and I think that will really be the third episode is to look broadly at those translations and extrapolate from that experience um, and from those translations, maybe some more generalized thoughts about uh, what we learn about like Lee Bai's work in general, what we learn about uh, Tang Dynasty poetry, and in, a, in, in, in essence, what we learn about uh, sort of the limits of moving between Chinese and English. Um, and I think that hopefully will be helpful. So the next time, my goal is at least the next time you pick up a book of translation or encounter a poem in translation, you realize, um, as I've come to realize, just how much work happens and how often things um, are, are sort of a best attempt, a good effort on the part of the translator with the idea and the, the growing awareness for many translators that what you're achieving is maybe at best a beautiful failure, something that um, hopefully pays homage to the original in some way, um, preserves some of that beauty, um, while also um, there is an exercise in humility as you realize there are things that you simply can't bring over. And the more you realize that, the more um, of an appreciation you have for, for the amazing gift that language is in so many different languages and cultures, that its multiplicity and, and um, variety is, uh, is something that is wonderful um, because it opens up our mind to the many different ways in which we communicate. Um, and sometimes can teach us what we can do that we didn't know we could do within our own language. Um, so in any case, I, I hope you enjoy this particular departure from my usual short format. Um, and uh, we'll stay tuned for the next uh, couple episodes. And if these are too long for you, um, that's okay. Uh, just drop in next week and I'll be back to my shorter format uh, readings. Um, but if you like these, please like this video, um, comment below, uh, subscribe to the series, and I'll be back um, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday with new content. Um, and let me know if there's other topics or poetry that you would like me to, to attempt or to talk about, and I'll be happy to do that. So until next time, stay safe, stay well, and keep reading poetry.